In the week, the 119th teenager died on London streets. It's become clear that public faith in the police is at breaking point. These brutal murders in London and nationwide are down to a dereliction of duty by our police, our politicians and our judges. A dabbing new report says police are losing control of our streets. 90% of all crimes go unsolved and 75% of all call-outs are for non-crimes. So instead of talking about police cuts, let's focus on the people who have been failed by the police, the people who have died, who live in fear, abandoned by a force they feel is more interested in online crime than real crime. The police exist to protect us and to keep the peace. Yet we have young men armed to the teeth, swaggering around our cities, confident no one will stop them. Meanwhile, police time is consumed by PC agendas, online crimes and so-called hate crimes. Yes, we have many dedicated police officers, but their bosses have forgotten what the job is about and what their priorities are. They need to stop bleating about cut and remember people's lives matter more than political correctness. I've got a lot of sympathy with what you say about the police not getting distracted about hate crime and so on. But I think I'm going to take issue on the knife crime question. And uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm probably a little bit um, uh, engaged with this one yeah. because uh, three of the uh, killings in London took place in this year within 10 minutes of my own doorstep. And one of the two hotspots in London um, there are two postcodes, N22, Wood Green, and N17, Tottenham, were where I grew up and went to school. And the road I walk to school every day is one of the worst places in, uh, in the capital for this. Now, what is really interesting is there's absolutely no evidence that police numbers make the slightest bit of difference to this. And, you know, it's common sense. If you are going to do stab, go in for stabbing, if you are arranging to have a fight with somebody, which is how this works, mm -hmm. you don't do it in a place where the police are going to turn up. So police, number, evidence, police right? numbers make almost okay. no impact on this. But there is and, evidence and that if, the police is the, the, uh, the, stop, the stopping of the stop and search, which Theresa no. May did when she was Home Secretary, she could stop and search by 80%. And it's no coincidence that in the years following, knife there, crime has rocketed. I, well, I don't think they're... <laughs> having partly been responsible for persuading uh, Theresa May to change stop and search regulations, the point about stop and search was not about reduction in numbers. It was in reduction in unfairness and dispro racial disproportionality. But let me come to a point where perhaps you wouldn't expect to hear this from me. I think that you're actually being overly politically correct. <laughs> I think I think you're that's making that's not something I've been I, I think of you're before, Trevor. I think you're making a big deal about police numbers which yeah, have yeah. nothing to do with what is actually going on in the street because one of the things you don't want to say is if you look at every face with two exceptions of those who've been killed in yeah. London. It's... Every one of them looks like me. Yes. The one thing we will not yes. talk about is the fact that this crime or this wave of crimes is racially coded and let me make one other point about this ten years ago when I was actually responsible for some of this I wrote to Gordon Brown who was then Chancellor asked me to do some work on it for him and I wrote to him and I said look you've got to start by acknowledging who this is happening to and where it's happening before you start to think about how we're going to do anything about it because if you don't you're going to spend a lot of money on the wrong things and in this particular case, what will happen is you will continue to have, I feel this, black children mm -hmm. dying because actually you're too afraid to tackle the actual exactly. problem. Let, let me come and then I'll let you guys in. I, mean, I completely agree with that. But, you know, I, I think that we, I think that the government and police have been politically correct in attacking this form of crime, which is why I think the stop and search was reduced because, it, we, we, you know, the, the government and police were accused of being racist and stopping young black boys. But I am sure the black mothers of all those dead children would actually rather their sons had been stopped and searched than actually have been stabbed. And I, and I think political correctness is the reason that young black boys are being slain on our streets every day because we want to be seen as this tolerant, diverse, compassionate society. But actually, we, it, we've got to do exactly what you're saying. We've got to look at where the problems are. And they're happening in areas like Tottenham. And I read something that you wrote not too very long ago where you said oh, we should blimey. be having higher... I've read lots of what you read. Higher concentrations of policemen in the areas like you just described because police, we don't see them on the streets anymore. And if you're telling kids we're not going to stop and search you... 
they're going to carry more weapons yeah, but my, and it's happening my, in those areas you're I, talking I, about. That's completely right. But my point is, you're, getting, you're going down the wrong road here because the, pro the reason some of this is happening is, is, is not about whether you've got more police or not. It is who are these kids? Ten years ago, one of the things that happened was that we had a flood of children, I agreed with this, who came from war zones. These children had seen things that no person, no adult should have to see, but they saw these things before they were ten years old. Rape, maiming, all the rest of it. We brought them here, we dumped them in schools, we gave them nothing, no support, we gave them no help. And then ten years later, I wonder what's happening. Yeah, 17 this, and 18 okay, year olds go are going the, out with go knives. Knife. This is about more than knife crime, though. It's about every crime. Please, well, we're not solving 90% of all crime. The truth of the matter is, the matter is you're both right. Um, you're right that uh, Theresa May's DNA is all over this problem because as Home Secretary, and I'm dismayed to hear, Trevor, that you think you were right to persuade the number of stops to come down, as long no, as they are professionally... I stop and the, dispro the disproportionality. I didn't care about well, the numbers. You, but you've argued That's... almost against yourself because, quite rightly, you point to that depressing gallery of faces that stares yeah. out of us every morning, almost every morning, and with virtual no exception, they're all black or mixed-race faces. So there's no point... That we have to stop mostly black males if we're going... because well, they're keep, mostly... You keep thinking stop and search is going to solve this problem. My it's, point it's, is... It's it, Part of it. It's, it's part. Take the weapons it's away. part. It's. It is. There are many, many ways that you need to address that. Uh, you're also. You're also right that there needs to be more support. But the police in London, and and it's worth saying, this is a national problem. Yeah. We're talking around 250 murders across uh, stabbings across the whole of the country. These are huge, yeah. huge figures. You're not going to solve it overnight. The police have lost part of the streets in this city, in London, which is wholly wrong. As I say, Theresa May is over that, and I just sense, I just sense, that unless we start getting tough, unless we crack down on this, it is going to get a lot worse. And please don't give me, Greg, I will come, please don't give me this austerity line. That is the biggest load of cobblers I've ever heard. No, I'm just that. saying that we're going to hear it, because we're going to hear... Oh, it's because there's austerity. There's austerity in Jaywick Sands, yeah, it's, one it's, of the it's... poorest parts of Clacton, out by Clacton. No. They don't stab... There's austerity in Sunderland. There is something unique to the London culture. My, my yeah, point... Can I... Can my I... point is you're not going to get cracked down in, in Guildford, Surrey, are you? No. I mean, what's the point of that? Let's just have a look at uh, what Sadiq Khan, as the Mayor oh. of London, said. There are deep societal problems that leads to young people getting involved in crime. I'm not excusing criminality, but it means tackling the causes of violent crime. That means looking at adverse childhood experiences, looking at the families where there may be children experiencing domestic abuse, children who may have uh, mental health uh, challenges. I mean, what's interesting about him, he's saying it's a sort of ten year, there's a, you need a ten year programme to do something about it. Be interesting to know, Trevor, you, you've been involved. Do you think that's right? Do you think you need a long term, it's, there's only a long term solution? Uh, I think there is a long-term solution to to essentially stopping the long-term cause. But I think you've got to do something about it now, because yeah, kids are dying. Yeah, sure. I also think this, this whole Glasgow thing is it's just nonsense. It's absolutely the, the, ridiculous. The research, the research on, Glas on the Glasgow stabbings is pretty clear that, generally speaking, what was happening there were random heat-of-the-moment stabbings. And, I, you know, we don't need to go into the culture and the drinking and all that, but that's what the research says. In London, this is planned. It is strategic. Yeah. The gangs arrange to kill somebody yes. because they did something that you didn't like. Okay. It's a whole different problem. Okay. So, well, so what do you do? Well, I've been listening patiently to all of you, yeah. and especially you two, Carol and Trevor, and I, I mean, Nick said you're both right. I think you're both wrong. So, Carol, I think you're wrong because you're suggesting that cuts to policing have no impact on crime. Didn't say that. So just did not say you that. said that cuts to policing have nothing to do with this particular issue. Cuts to police, we've lost 14,000 officers in 10 years. We still have 122,000 officers who actually should be able to stop gangs killing each other on street corners. It's enough. The government has reduced central government funding to the police by 25% since 2010-11. There is no question that that has affected people's safety. And if you just broaden it out beyond yes, knife crime, yes, yes. black people are disproportionately victims of crime across the board. Poor areas, people are experiencing more crime, oh, and goodness. policing has been cut. Trevor, you're wrong, because this isn't the elephant in the room we never talk about. We always talk about knife crime as a black problem. We talk about black on black crime. We kind of zone show in. Me, I've had debates with Carol on this show. Show me a piece in The show. Guardian where on knife crime it has been mentioned that the victims are uh, black. Well I said. looked for it this, this year and I could not find a 
find a single one. Show debate me a single piece. It's framed about black on black crime. Show me a and single piece where your newspaper table. has ever mentioned that this, this affects black children. I have sat at this table children. and, we have and had this exact this debate with Carol where it's been framed as some kind of innate savagery around young black men yeah, 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 that drives them to kill each other. That's what you want to believe, Afwa, that people are saying. Nobody's saying that. That's nonsense. This is always framed as a black thing. There's even been task force naming it in the Met the BBC, as black on the Guardian, crime. anybody Operation has mentioned Trident. that this has been a black Operation issue. Operation Trident, which was specifically Trident was about black on this black issue, crime. was about black on black crime. No, Trident was about something different. I know that. The reason Don't forget, that we I was there. about this, even we even know the names of Trident, and even know, the reason we even know the, the phrase black on black crime is because it's something that has had currency in framing this real, as a black well, issue. Anyway, that, my, my, it is real. It is my, black sack that's kids. What, so, black so, kids. so, so. It's true that the, the yes. victims and the perpetrators in this case are mainly young black men yes. from areas that are dis Yes, and that's why, and like Trevor, I have a personal investment because I know people who've been involved. And the thing that I think we're framing this wrong, wrongly is that we talk about this as if these stabbings are somehow a cause. They are a symptom. They are a symptom of something much bigger that's happening in society. The reason I find this whole debate frustrating is I feel like we know the answers already. For example, look at what wealthy people do for their kids. They put them in excellent schools, they give them stimulating extracurricular activities, they live in good housing, they have access to high quality You're food. Excuse Poor people kids, stabbing we are people dumping children they grew up on a in substandard estate. housing, poor education, so that, parents who can't supervise them because they're working in so they low wage jobs. That, it's it is a huge not, leap it is not, not, it is every, every people, people who work on this seen, issue. It's people making excuses for these kids. You can call excuses. Each other. People who work on this issue, who actually know more about it than I or you, Carol, because they are working with the people involved, the perpetrators and the victims, say over and over again that the causes are social exclusion, poverty, lack of opportunity, and so things that we know I, how to cure if we're interested. But we're not really interested, for, so why okay, are we having the debate? For a raft of reasons, let's see what the Home Secretary is saying about this. When you talk to police officers, there's also the work to be done around your know, powers, and that's why there's great support, for example, the Offensive Weapons Bill, which will make it even harder for people to get hold of knives and other offensive weapons, taking more of these weapons off our streets. And the police will also rightly say that this isn't just a job for them. There's a job for many other parts of the public sector, and that's why I'm so keen on this public, what I call the public health approach. A last word for now, I sense, from Home Secretary Sajid Javid, speaking exclusively to Sky's Deputy Political Editor, Beth Rigby. Trevor. I'll just say they're not stabbing each other in Hastings or Sunderland or Jaywick, or Jaywick where they're just as poor. Yeah.